Hey guys, so the other day I dropped my son off at school and I'm driving down the road and I saw this beauty sitting on the curb. So of course me being me, I stopped, looked inside. Um, it didn't look too bad, uh, so I picked it up. So it was kind of gross in there, um, but I've gone ahead and cleaned this out. Uh, it had been sitting on the curb for a little bit uh, because there was some bird poop and stuff on the top, but I got it all cleaned up. And so let's take a look at it and figure out what's wrong with it. So right off the bat, I can see that the thermostat is on. Uh, it's turned to a cool setting. Um, so we'll, we'll check that out in a bit. And you can see someone went a little crazy with the Paw Patrol stickers. So we'll be getting those off as well, but let's get it turned around to the back. Um, I've got another video uh, that I did two years ago, I think, on repairing a mini fridge. And a lot of these mini fridges are the same issue. And that issue is on the compressor, and this big black round thing is the compressor, on the side of it, there's a little black box. Um, underneath that, there's usually two components. One is a start relay, and the other is an overload protection. So typically, either the start relay or the overload protection fails. Um, I don't know the issue with this one, um, and, but since I don't know the history of this unit, since it was just sitting on the side of the road, I wanna do a few preliminary checks. So the first is to make sure that we don't have any shorts to ground, to make sure that if we plug this into the wall, it's not gonna immediately trip a breaker because um, electricity is going straight to ground. So to do this, you're gonna need a multimeter. Now this is uh, just a like a $25 Craftsman multimeter that I've had for probably 15 years. Um, but even the, the three or four or $5 uh, cheap multimeters that you can get from Harbor Freight or uh, various online places um, should all have these functionality. So, um, the best setting to use is the continuity check or diode check. And so it looks like this little uh, volume symbol or the little diode is like a little straight line with an arrow through it. So on that setting, most meters, when you touch the leads together, it will beep. And that means you have a complete circuit from the red lead to the black lead. So to test, what we're wanting to test is our plug. And we want to make sure that between either of the flat blades, that they do not have a complete circuit to the round pin. The round pin is our ground. Um, so we'll just test that. Hook one to that and touch it here. No beep. Now we'll try the other one. No beep, so we're good. Uh, the other thing that we can check is, since we know from earlier that the thermostat was turned to an on position, we should have continuity between the two flat pins. And we do. So that tells us that current is getting through our thermostat. Uh, there's no disconnected wires or uh, broken uh, thermostat and so we should be good to go. Uh, another thing that you can check is on our ground pin, the, the round one, hold one lead on that, and then just touch the ground, any, any metal inside the case here. And so we know that we do have a complete circuit from here to ground. So this little uh, black box here, under that is our relay and should be the overload. And so I'm just going to use a little flat blade screwdriver and there's a little metal clip holding it on here. And some of these come right off and some of them take some work. Okay, so I've got my clip released. We'll swing that out of the way. And then again, making sure we're unplugged. We don't want any power going to this while we're working on it. Um, this cover should just slide off. Right here, uh, we've got a red wire coming up and this goes to our overload protection. So how that works, if there's too much current going into the uh, compressor, um, there's a little 
bimetallic strip in there. If it gets too hot, it kind of flexes and pops into a different position and it cuts the power going to the compressor. Um, we can see our green wire here. It just loops down and it goes to a screw that's hidden right behind this copper pipe. And that is basically just grounding our compressor. And then we've got this white wire that comes around and it plugs into this little black device here. And that is our start relay. So I'm just gonna get my screwdriver in here and gently pry these off. Um, it, the compressor just has three flat, uh, or I'm sorry, three round posts. And so those just pry right off. And I'll go ahead and get these out. And so these connectors just slide onto these little uh, flat spade connectors. And then there you can see the little round connector that slides onto the compressor. So this is the overload and it is usually white in color or the majority of it is white. And you can see the top of this one's black, but the bottom is white. And then we'll get the start relay off. Oop, and I dropped it. And so on most of these mini fridges, they use this style of start relay. And so this is what's called a PTC relay or positive temperature coefficient. And you can see this hump right in the middle. And inside of here, there's like a, it's a thermistor, which is basically a resistor that changes resistance as it gets hotter, as it heats up. So how this works is you've got power going into this one connector and then there's a thermistor in there and it transmits power from here to this round pin and then also through the thermistor and it comes out this other pin. Well, as that um, little disc in there heats up, it will build up enough resistance to basically cut power to this pin, but allow power to keep flowing through that pin. And that's because in this compressor, there are two different windings, a start winding and a run winding. And so you only want the start powered up just to get it running. And then once it's running, cut power to the start winding. Usually one of the telltale signs of these being bad is if you shake them, they will rattle. As you can see, this one is not rattling. I highly doubt that anyone set this fridge out on the curb if it was still working properly. So I'm guessing that one of these two components is bad, um, but we will test both of them. And if they're not bad, there could be either a problem with the compressor or it could just be out of refrigerant. Uh, you can see like the little solder joints on here and sometimes those will leak and all of the refrigerant will leak out and then it just can't cool any longer. Okay, so I've got our two components here up on the bench. Um, so I'm gonna start with our start relay. And so here you can see our relay has some markings on it. Let's see if I can get that to focus in there. So you can see it says JPQ Roman numeral two dash 4.7. Um, the JPQ Roman numeral two may have some significance. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I do know that the 4.7 is a pretty common uh, value for this style of start relay. And you will either see this written as 4.7, like it is here, or sometimes it's written as 4R7, uh, but basically that just tells you the resistance of the thermistor disc in here. So since this one isn't rattling, that thermistor is still a complete unit, and so ideally it should still be working. But to check this, we're going to need our multimeter again, and we will, we will be measuring resistance, or ohms, and so we need to turn it to our ohm setting. And this 4.7, that indicates 4.7 ohms, is what it should read. And so because our ohm reading is expected to be less than 200, we can set it on this 200. If we were reading something that was supposed to be like 300 ohms, we would need to bump up to the next value, so up to the 2000 range. So. Basically, to check these, you will just insert one pin into one hole and the other into the other hole. And you can see it flashed on for just a second. I'll show you that again. So we get a value real quick, and it was 144, and that's getting pretty close to our 
200 max. And so let's bump it up to the 2000 range. Okay, so you can see for something that is supposed to be measuring five ohms, we're measuring 1018 ohms. And so I'm pretty sure that one's bad because um, it should have five ohms of resistance. This has more resistance than that. And so the current can't get from this pin through the thermistor and out to the start winding on the compressor. So while we're here, we'll go ahead and test the overload. Uh, the overload, there's probably a resistance value for this, but we can just do it with a continuity check. So we should just have continuity between the round pin and this flat pin. And we do. So if we wanted to test functionality of this, we could um, use a heat gun or something and heat this up, but I'm not going to go to that trouble. So that test is good. So here's our culprit. And by the power of Amazon, boom, we got a new one. So I will put a link to this down in the description, but let's get this new one out and test it. Okay, so are there any markings on this one? Oh, there we go. You can see it's 4R7 is how this one is marked. Uh, but we have one flat pin and then two holes in the bottom. So, and these are marked start and motor. So we're gonna turn this back to our 200 setting. And so you can see we're at 5.8 ohms. So there's a little bit of acceptable tolerance. Usually it's plus or minus 10%. Pretty much if you're anywhere close to five ohms, it should be good. So this is our good one. Um, we're gonna go put this back on the unit, but while we've got it here and while we're up on the bench, let's take this apart and see what it looks like inside. So you can see inside, we just have our two pins, our two round connectors, and they go straight to this little ceramic disc. And let me see if I can get that out. Oh, I just broke it a little bit. So I don't know if that's just kind of a little piece of insulation. I bet it is. Um, but here we can see this is the pin that came out the back side. And these little spring feet are what sat on that. And same for this side, those little spring feet that sit on that. So I'm curious, let's just measure directly across this disc and see what we got. Okay. So interestingly enough, directly across the thermistor, we have five ohms. So possibly, these little worn spots on this disc maybe weren't making good contact or something. I wonder if we rotated that disc if it would change anything. So now that I got it back together. <laughs> so just rotating that disc, you can see I'm now at five ohms. I'll drop it down to the 200 ohm setting for a little more precision. So yeah, um, this one would actually work for a little while if I wanted to run it. I do have the replacement already, but I may keep this just for a, oh no, it stopped working and I need something right now to keep stuff cold. Um, actually, I'm gonna go put this back on and we'll see if it fires up. All right, so this is the old one. Uh, it's the 4.7, not the 4R7. And white wire hooks to that. Uh, in, the, in the last video I had, um, I did have a couple comments that people couldn't get the wires off of their start relay. And so if you look inside these connectors, it's basically just a flat piece of metal that kind of rolls over on itself. And if those are pinched super tight down on these flat connectors, on these flat blades, they can be super hard to get off. So uh, you may need to get a pair of pliers or something and just kind of pull them, uh, but they should come off. Let's go. Yeah. 
start relay on, and then we'll plug it in. And I don't know if you hear that, but the compressor started right up and it is currently running. And I can hear a refrigerant circulating. So it's still running. Um, overload hasn't kicked off. Compressor started up. So I'm gonna let this run for a little while and we'll come back and see if it's actually cooling off inside. Okay, so I just put this thermometer in here. You can see it's currently 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the thermostat setting is pointed over to here to between cold and coldest. You can see it's 1102. I'm gonna close this up and we'll come back and see how it's doing. So you can see I got all the stickers cleaned off. So it's been about 30 minutes and I don't know if I can get you in there. So we're down to uh, 44 degrees. So it is definitely cooling off. All right, so it's been about three hours later and we're down at 32 degrees. Working like it should. So that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Um, pretty simple repair, um, cheap repair that Replacement start relay uh, was, I think, five bucks, and I'll post a link to it down in the description. If the start relay on your fridge has more than one um, flat terminal on it, they do offer um, two and three and four pin relays, depending on the wiring of your particular fridge. Uh, some have start capacitors, some have run capacitors, some have start and run capacitors. So if you have like a two pin on your fridge, and you can't find a replacement two pin, a three pin will work as long as you hook wires up where your original wires were to the same position on the new relay. Um, the only thing to keep in mind there is there could potentially be uh, power going to that third uh, terminal. So as long as you keep the uh, plastic cover on it before you plug it in, shouldn't have any issues, but just be aware that there could potentially be uh, current going to a terminal that isn't covered. Uh, other than that, if you have any other questions or comments, uh, definitely leave them down below. If you like what I do, give me a thumbs up, uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I've got a bunch of other content repairing various appliances, uh, motorcycles, lawnmowers. Um, so uh, until next time, we'll see you later.